Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days and we are continuing to learn cloud assurance from scratch. So today we're going to talk about basic console commands. Uh, right now we are in module 6, uh, basic console commands. Uh, we This module will have two parts. We will talk about Windows commands in the first part today and in the second part next video we will talk about Linux commands. Uh, why we need to be able to work in the console, right? So as a QA engineer, many times you will work in the systems that have no graphical user interface. So unlike Windows or a MacBook, all you're gonna have in front of you is like a terminal. Uh, in that terminal, you'll have to gather logs, you'll have to navigate, you'll have to maybe configure a network. So it's very important you at least get familiar uh, with them, right? Uh, over here on this, visual presentation, we can see how the systems evolved. And you see from Unix, a lot of the modern systems coming from Unix. Um, so the commands, basic commands in those systems that are coming from Unix are gonna be uh, very similar and some of them gonna be the same. So if you're using MacBook and you open terminal uh, and you start typing some commands in your Mac system, and then you open Ubuntu or Fedora, or Android and start typing those commands in those system, uh, they're gonna be very similar or the same, right? Um, a lot of the manufacturers use their own uh, like limited versions of a Linux or Unix on uh, their system to run their devices. So for example, um, if you have a modem or router at home, uh, if you have some GUI, sure, you can log into the GUI as a user, but the configurations there are limited. So, But the actual system itself probably is running on some sort of a Linux system where if you have access to the console, you can gather logs, you can maybe have admin privileges to configure your device differently, um, and so on. Um, for Windows devices, we have different commands because Windows did not start from Unix. Uh, it started from MS-DOS systems and a lot of commands that were in MS-DOS kind of carried on and you were, were added. So if you work uh, in the Windows system, you'll have a different set of commands. Now, maybe Windows is not often used uh, for like embedded systems, but still as a QA engineer, many times you will be building test beds or like, you know, you will be setting up different test equipment and it's uh, quite common that you will have Windows machine to manage in those or like your main access machine where you will have access from that machine to other uh, devices on that test bed. So even though you might not have as many embedded devices with Windows, right? Or a, any implementation of it, it's mostly Linux, but still Windows is still popular for like a management machine management system. Uh, plus if you work like with Windows servers, right? Um, okay, so here we have the history of it. Uh, you can study it and look at it, pause the video, uh, just kind of see how it branched out and developed. Now. Here we have a list of commands for Windows console that we're gonna practice. Um, only nine of them, there's really not a lot for like basic starter for QEngineer. Uh, and you have some links on your screen. So one, the first link is the page where we're gonna practice. You can load an actual Windows system in your Chrome browser. You don't have to install anything if you're on Mac. Uh, you don't need like a virtual machine. So we're gonna, practice in your browser. So you can do that, you can go through that link. One uh, thing though with the link, um, it's a little bit slow on loading, so it will take some time. Mine is already preloaded, but I will show you that it actually takes some time when you load it from, uh, for the first time from the very start. So, you know, don't, 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 get, don't worry about it. It's taking time, it's fine. Uh, and then there's also a link to uh, GitHub where you have like a, list of commands almost all of the commands a lot more than i have here on the screen uh you can go there and practice them as well or just kind of get yourself familiar with and if at some point you start working in the command prompt on windows and you need to look up some commands that's going to be a good place where you can just go to and refer to commands that you need to okay so uh here is this link 
it's available in the description for GS Linux. So over here, we already loaded um, Windows 2000. Now, if you go to this link, you'll have a list of virtual um, interfaces, user interface. So if you click on Windows 2000, start loading it, you'll see it's booting. You'll have a whole Windows system in front of you loading. Um, I'm not going to wait because, again, it, it, it will take a little bit of time here. I have one that is already loaded. Uh, so in order to get to your command prompt, you can just go to uh, run or on the modern system in your search, you can type CMD and it will show as a command prompt. Some of the commands might require to have um, an admin privilege. So you'll have to run it as admin. If you right click, uh, doesn't show here, but let's see. Uh, if you own like Windows machine, a newer Windows 10 and you type in search CMD, you can right click it and then there will be like run as an administrator, but this is not necessary. So you can also run it as a user, not as administrator. Okay, so here we are. Uh, so let's take a look at the list of the commands here. Uh, so let's start with ipconfig. So this is very first command. It, it is different in Linux. Uh, it's if config in, Lin in Linux system, but if you're in Windows, you can do ipconfig. And uh, what it will do, it will list uh, all of the networking devices that you have, their IP address, um, subnet mask. Um, you can do also IP config all to have like a complete information. So this will also give like physical address. Uh, if you don't really understand what it is right now, don't worry about it. But just remember that IP address is an address how you can reach a system uh, when you connect something, uh, when you communicate with a system. It ha if it has an IP address, it's on the network. That means you can actually talk to that, right? To that system so for example here we don't actually have anything connected to it but uh, i can issue a ping command the number three so uh, if you have multiple devices connected uh, you can verify that they're actually online and they uh, can talk to one another by issuing this ping command and providing the ip address of the device that you're trying to connect so we can do ping and in this case, I'm going to pin myself, essentially the same machine. Uh, so this is IP address. So 10.5.65.141. So if I'll do 10.5.65.141, uh, and I'll issue ping. And now I can see that it is replying, even though I'm talking, the machine is, is talking to itself. You can see it's actually connected. Um, and if there was multiple machines and they will be on the same uh, network, they have same configuration, they're under the same subnet mask, uh, they'll be able to talk to one another. Like the IP also has to be unique on the network. You don't, you can't have two same IP addresses on the same network on the same uh, subnet because otherwise it, they won't be able to uh, communicate. There will be conflict of the address there, right? Okay, um, so I can ping. Uh, another command that I have here is netstat, the second one. So let's try that, netstat. All right, so <laughs> we can see there are really no active connections or anything like that. Uh, but what netstat does, it displays all open network connection and listening ports. So if you have some ports open and they're listening for connectivity and something is actually connected, you can do netstat and it will show a list of things that are connected. Uh, the other command is uh, CD. So CD is essentially how you can navigate around the same way how you go into a folder and move around, like you can go into my documents um, and then navigate to another folder within my documents. You can do the same thing uh, with a CD command. So let's see if we can grab this address here. Can we grab this address? 
Uh, it is convenient in Windows 10 if you just click on the address, you can actually copy the pass and go there, but we can't do that. So let's start with uh, dir. So dir command uh, number six, it will show content of folder that you're currently working in. So by doing dir, we can actually see uh, where we at. So in, we're in the C drive and by doing there we can see okay what we got here so let's say we're gonna go from uh, the root of the c drive into documents and settings so let's do cd and then you start typing you can start just typing do and press tab okay probably not in this console okay documents Um, on a more modern system, you can just press tab and it's actually uh, going to fill uh, the remaining part of the command for you if that uh, directory exists. Okay, now you can see now we are moved from a root directory from the C. Now we're in C documents and settings. So actually, by using CD command, we're navigated within this folder. So where I am right now, so if you take a look here, uh, local disk C. So here's documents and settings. So essentially by issuing the city command and the name of the folder I navigated was in here, right? Um, so let's do it there. And we can see here that we, uh, we have uh, multiple folders. So all users test one, all users test one. There's a default user that's hidden. Um, okay, so now we navigate inside. If we do cd dot dot, uh, we actually gonna go back and we navigate it back from where we came from. So now we back into the root. And if you move up and down your arrows, you can see the command line saves history. So you can actually go and reuse the commands that you issued before. So let's let's go inside documents and settings again. Okay, so we're here. Um, the next command that we're going to look at is, uh, okay, let's do system info and display uh, Windows system information. System info. System info. Okay, so looks like uh, this Windows, Windows 2000, doesn't have system info um, or yeah I don't think it does but if you on Windows 10 and if you go in your command terminal command uh, command prompt and you issue system info it will show you all the information about your system so like the name of your machine uh, your operating system version it will show your uh, processor information um, I mean like if you have to if you're working on Windows based machine and you need to get some in environment environment information about the system let's say you're testing different drivers or you're testing different uh, video cards with a specific like motherboard and processor combination if you want to get this inf information out you can just uh, issue system info and it will display everything for you uh, not on this Windows because it's a little bit uh, outdated, right? Okay, uh, what else? Let's take a look. Um, so here is how we can uh, create file with specific text. So we can issue echo command, then type text that we want. Um, then point and like an uh, arrow and then file name.txt or whatever file name we want to have. So let's try that one out. Echo uh, test, let's say test and then test uh, file.txt. Run this command. Now you see this test file appeared right here. So when you need to gather a log and you want to pass some information inside of it, you can do this. Uh, and if we open it up, we actually see the word test inside, okay? 
Uh, if you want to read the information, uh, it was in the file, you can do this command, more and then file name. So let's do more test underscore file file dot txt okay and it prints out what is inside the file so if you need to get some logs out and find some information was in the text file without a graphical user interface you can do more uh, test underscore file uh, or more file name right uh, and the last one is delete so delete and the file name so let's do del and test underscore file dot txt. Okay, and now if we're gonna do there, we will see that uh, file is actually gone. Yep, was deleted. All right, um, you can issue help and help will give you a list of commands that are available for this specific system. So, and again, there is this link for GitHub um, where there's a great variety of additional commands that you can just kind of go through and practice um, for yourself. Just be careful, like don't read what the command da does so you don't mess up your system. Or if you're gonna practice, you can practice just here in JS Linux uh, so you don't mess up your actual Windows machine. Right. Thanks everyone for watching. This was Alex USA Days, and in the second part of this video, uh, we will talk about Linux commands.